Kyle F. What can I say? Other than Kyle F. I, I, I tweeted, would you guys still love me if I got a BBL? I thought that was hilarious. I, I attribute to the fact of why I got partner comes from that series where I would stream for an hour or sometimes two and I would try to get every single advancement in Minecraft. A lot of the Minecraft scene, if you can kind of connect the dots back to 2021, you'll find that a lot of people came from, from one try SMP. I guess, I guess that's why it helps as well, like because this is an original concept and I realized that this hadn't really been done before. Um, so I was always on the outside looking in and something I really wanted to be part of because I thought it was really, really cool. Some of my friends from outsiders are some of my best friends to this day. What was going through your head at the time to do that? Streaming streaming has given me dividends in my real life, and it's given me a unique skill set that I wouldn't have if I didn't invest in myself in this way. In the Pirates Discord, I think Amesy sent a message saying, you are such an asshole. I said, this is really funny. All right, lads, welcome back to Inside MC, the part of the podcast where I sit down with a very special guest every single week. And today I am joined by someone who, who's very cool, very awesome, and they go by Kalef. Hey, Kalef. Kalef. Hey. This guy watched the tutorial. That's all I got to say. How, how'd I do? I think he did pretty well. I, I mean, it's always good to go back to the drawing board sometimes, get a little bit of emphasis in the right spot. But I, yeah. overall, pretty solid. Uh, with, with that with that then, and to kind of get two Twitter questions out the way right off the bat from both Akko and Camden. How, yeah. how do you pronounce Kyle F? Kyle F. What can I say? Other than Kyle F. Kind of, kind of an easy one. It really rolls off the tongue if you think about it. Yeah. Um, just easy. It's just easy to hear and easy to digest. And you know, if people are if people are joking about saying your name in a certain way, I think I think I've done a good job. So I have, I, I need more emphasis. I, I'm not, I'm not going to practice it on the podcast. I'll practice it off the podcast. Yeah. But I have read, I, I see where I've gone wrong now. I'm going I'm going to learn. I'm going to listen back to this multiple times and learn from it. Look, just just in case, don't say it in the mirror three times fast because I will appear. Oh, now I kind of want to please don't i really don't want to appear everybody if you're listening right now run to the closest mirror and say it three times and then and then kyle f will just teleport everyone. Uh, no, no. My, my schedule is so busy you don't want to do that no 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 it's cool guys don't worry about it i, I got i got lucky just having you on the podcast today right yeah exactly hopefully no one just don't go into your bathroom during this podcast i uh i <laughs> don't want to don't want to have to leave here to <laughs> make it over there with that being said then Alice, uh before we get into talking more about you and actually proceeding with the podcast uh, mm -hmm. i always like to give the intro for an opportunity uh for you to tell the view who you are because all i said was your name i didn't actually really introduce yeah. anything about you so it's like who are you what do you do uh all that kind of jazz yeah, well, first and foremost, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about myself because I love talking about myself. One of my favorite activities. Same. Um, but uh, my name is Kyle F. Um, I am a general Minecraft streamer. I, I thought about how I was going to market myself, but I, I okay. realized that I do too many things within Minecraft to actually be able to label myself in a certain way. I used to label myself as a hardcore streamer, but that's because that's what I used to do as my main thing. But now I've branched out to a lot of different things, including hardcore, but SMP content speed running um events uh, and, and really anything else so it's it's been it's been a fun time i'm making content for most of my life i would say probably since 2013 i think is when i made my first youtube channel and now i'm here 10 years later and i'm still making content uh, which is kind of crazy to th even think about considering some of my oldest videos are still on youtube to this day and I, I haven't told anyone where they are so if you're really looking for a quest i i challenge the viewer the listener to to go and find it because i'm not going to give you any hints but it's out there um and it's minecraft it's minecraft related so i have the same kind of thing i think i might have talked about it previously but i, I know i have talked about it before if, if like but it's only to really to the og viewers and not on the podcast like on my own insane orbits mm -hmm. i have like a channel out there as well from content from like 10 years ago uh, from Minecraft. Right. Uh, what was the edition before Minecraft Bedrock Edition on, on like, uh, my, my, I think it's like Minecraft e uh, Xbox Edition or whatever, right? Yep, uh, Minecraft Xbox. Yeah, I have like content of uh, where I built, me and a few friends at the time built the Hive mini game server on like Xbox Edition. And it was actually pretty cool as well. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it to us. It was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. You have alongside that, you also forgot to mention that you've become quite uh, an influential person on Twitter as well. Uh, yeah, you know, my, my Twitter account is one of my, one of my babies <laughs> um i love i love my twitter account honestly so uh, a lot of people look at my twitter and i get a lot of comments that are either you are the funniest person i've ever i've ever met or i'm afraid of your twitter account because of your tweets and i usually get the latter comment a lot more but honestly like 
how I use my Twitter account. Um, by the way, if you don't follow me, it's at it's Kyle F on Twitter or yep. X. I don't know. I I, I love dead naming the platform because because yeah, of the, the dead name decisions they made. Oh, I dropped my phone. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but Jen, you know, like a lot of the tweets that I, I put out there are just things that pop into my head. Like I don't really think about it. I just kind of post. Um, so one morning I'll wake up and I'll be like, huh, what's really funny in my head right now? And the first thing that pops into my head gets posted. Um, and let's see, let's see. I mean, it's totally go to my Twitter right biggest now. hit right like yeah you know, like, honestly it's even it's, a pin, I, pin post. surprisingly surprisingly it's not my biggest post ever um i think my biggest post ever on twitter was i asked scott scott's major what i should get from starbucks and i think oh, I it got that, yeah. a lot of people responding to it um i think well, scott obviously responded to it uh, and i got my coffee um, i think toby or tubbo responded to it as well and then a few other people responded to it as well i just can't remember um but i think it got like three thousand four thousand likes and i i kind of am upset with myself because i think i'm much funnier than asking scott what i should get from starbucks it just hasn't happened that a tweet that i've i've had popped off oh you know what i lied the my biggest tweet ever was um my controversial takes um for mcyt which we and will we will talk about we're, we're we will talk, talk about, about it. okay that's podcast. fine yeah yeah that's fine i'll talk I, i'm gonna talk about that tweet though in in particular because i think yeah, it has yeah, a funny fine. origin story so i posted that because i saw oh whose tweet was it i think there it was so Technic. many tweets so. um i i saw a tweet from technic um who said what's what's your controversial take that would have you like this for speed running minecraft speed running um and so i thought that was funny because I, I i was addicted to scrolling through all of the replies to it so i yeah. thought what better way than to just actually do it myself because um funny enough i i posted that right as i started my car to go on a four-hour drive so i posted that with the intention of like okay i'm not gonna look at my phone and when i get on my phone again i'm gonna have something to do when i get back because like i'm gonna be tired i i wanted like something to just like relax and like read i'm kind of cynical in that way like i really was like very interested to see what people would say um and very quickly it started getting traction but there was a period in, in time where i couldn't really use twitter because all of my my responses or quote retweets or likes or whatever were related to like the dream smp and and like oh the dream smp was bad uh dream stu sucks dreams awesome sapnap sucks sapnap's awesome like, that's like that, kind of, that kind of pool yeah right so uh, it, it originally started as something i i just wanted to like have something to do honestly um it ended up getting i think like three million views or something like that on twitter which is probably my biggest day and i i responded to it saying right to do so i thought that was funny <laughs> and then um so so what like how so when you said it was like a period of time where you couldn't use swear what did what do you mean by that like like you just you couldn't use it or you didn't want to yeah it, I, whenever i would go on twitter i would have the 20 plus notification bell oh uh, um, it's always about that got you okay yeah and like i couldn't see like any of my friends tweet or anything like that um it was always like oh la 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 like oh dream oh uh, i don't like youtube stuff like that it's stupid yeah did you because i remember you cry between that saying like it'd be really funny if you delete it did you end up deleting it i, I try I no i didn't delete corner. it i i kept it up because i actually like it i it's thought it was tweet. funny it is a good tweet i thought it was funny um generally speaking like i was never gonna delete the uh, whenever i i do something like that i just do it for engagement yeah i mean it's a bit like the felt cute might delete layer kind of that's that's what you should tweet after this podcast a picture of yourself and just end this thing felt cute might delete later yeah and then exactly. people can well i have a this the law I I, I I I did you not? Yeah, I, I woke up uh, this morning and I, I looked at my phone because I knew we had the podcast today. Um, <laughs> and it was like eight a.m. and I, I scheduled my alarm for nine o'clock. That's why I usually wake up on the weekends. Um, but for whatever reason, my neighbor who I share a wall with, and I've had this problem in the past actually. Um, they love to like watch TV at the loudest possible volume, uh... and. For, for whatever reason i could hear everything that they're doing i don't know if i don't know if it was their kid watching a show or something um but it was like really really loud this morning so i just couldn't fall back asleep um so i just stayed up and obviously got ready for this podcast but on the weekends i i, I don't really shower until like i kind of get like comfortable you know i drink my coffee like i'm drinking my coffee right now because um, we ended up moving this an hour forward as well i, I just wanted yes. to ask and then i guess i got lucky with it so. i'm always ready that's that's what the thing with me i'm always ready to go well if if you remember and you're down to obviously you know no pressure but you know if you if you want to make inside mc law then you can tweet at one point today the felt cute might delete later <laughs> yeah. um, i do i do i do enjoy 
you some of your tweets the uh, the the elf one is quite good there's like a good few like i mean i know you said sometimes you just wake up and it's whatever comes into your head but is there sometimes yeah. an actual like i i have i have it wrote down here as one of my notes why is he so silly goofy twitter humor like is there is there sometimes a thought process behind some of your tweets like disregard like um, the, the silly goofy ones not the uh yeah what your like um what's your hot take or whatever like that like the sometimes like with the kyle f name one how you pronounce it was there a thought process behind it or is it always literally just wake up it's an idea let's do it it's not always when i wake up i, I gotta clarify sometimes it'll uh, be in the middle of the day I mean. like the, that the, one the ideas, that sorry. one yeah i was sitting on my couch i was working and <laughs> for whatever reason i i was like i need to tweet something and because i just sometimes get the itch of like i need to tweet you know it's not really like uh, i i'm going to tweet or i have this idea it's i just want to tweet something yeah. um and so I don't know why, but I thought like I thought it was just really funny and really ironic that like my name is is easy to pronounce as is, but for some reason there's been cases where it's been pronounced poorly, like so? completely butchered. Um, I I don't want to say it because I don't want to I don't want the person to see this oh, and, okay. and hear it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I get that. That's fine. But I, I just thought it was funny because, like, um, I think my name is pretty easy to say, um, and I thought it was just ironic how people have to like do that, um, and for for a good reason for for the most part. But mine, I was like, I thought it'd be really funny, and then the voice like leading up to it. If you don't know, it's like it's um kind of like a play on like those anime like characters you know yeah, yeah um and it's something that my friends and i would joke about in vc like we would do that back and forth to each other um like ollie high key hate me was one of the first people i heard do that and i thought it was really funny um so i picked that up in our in our vc together i just kind of brought it out of that to that tweet and i i don't know i like literally i just started i opened up the camera and i started talking to it that's the first take that i took and then there's there's levels to it as well like whenever i do that i don't i kind of go in with a notion of i'm going to make this funny tweet but how can i make it like even funnier like things that you don't really notice right off the rip um that are just funny and one of those things was the snapchat filter i thought the snapchat filter was really funny <laughs> Um, cause if you go, if you scroll on TikTok for long enough, you'll get those millennials that just like overuse filters. And I think that's one of the funniest things ever because like I, I'm older, I'm 24 years old. So I, I know you're plenty 24? of millennials do that. I'm 24 years old. I thought you were 22. I don't know why. No, no I'm Jeez. old in the Minecraft community. Um, but I'm, I'm still a young guy, but yeah, I get that. Like, I, I know people that like use that unironically. I, th I just think it's hilarious. Um, so I decided, why don't I do that? Um, and that's, that's why I, that's why I did it the way I did it. So again, like a, a lot of the time, a lot of the tweets that you see, unless it's like my stream notification, it, there's usually like a, a, a two minute lead up to it of me just like literally coming up with the brainchild. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Like one of my, um, let me go to one of my latest tweets. The elf link, the elf link I'll one, tell you how long. Oh no. I so okay. So here's one. I, I, I tweeted, would you guys still love me if I got a BBL? I thought that was hilarious <laughs> because I had, I, I had watched a TikTok while I was sitting at my desk of this girl getting a BBL. I thought it was funny. Well, like talk if i had a bbl like do you guys still watch me you know i, I don't know like like it's i get it's just that. Yeah, no, i get, like, I get I yeah. like you know i mean you get a lot of interaction so it clearly works yeah you know what i just came with a tweet right now so i'll do that right now <laughs> i guess that's the same mindset i had with the whole uh for anyone who doesn't know the whole um how we gridding in front of in front of the guest announcement thing that was that was meant to be quote retweeting the announcement tweet by the way uh not that it matters oh, i mean okay. your your tweets all did really really well and i got a few questions from that tweet so it worked out nonetheless okay good but it was just it was just uh, uh yeah that was that was uh, like i kind of just took your idea and looked at it and thought oh that, that's like a funny thing to do if i just have you grittying in front of the the guest announcement you know and i i, I guess yeah. i guess it yeah. worked right <laughs> yeah absolutely so well what's the well, i need to see this tweet now what's the tweet that you have you tweeted it already or no yeah i just quote retweeted one of my old tweets i i, I realized i said economic crisis rather than environmental oh, I, so I quote <laughs> the same because i meant environmental not economic oh that's just a, that's that's from a tweet from no, two, uh, yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah yesterday. two days okay. ago, I think. Oh, wait, yeah. I, I, time zones, time zones for me, it's yesterday. Yep. Okay, cool. Right, back on track a little bit then. Sorry, that part, like, we just, it's, this sometimes happens on a podcast, but that's what makes it so good, right? It's, it's sometimes right. Right when it kind of goes off on little topics. This is probably going to be a bit of a silly question. Um, and I I mean, sometimes this isn't one of them, but sometimes I'm going to ask you questions that I know the answer to. But I yeah, obviously, that's fine. you're on the podcast, so it's thing. Is Kyle F in any way similar to your real name uh yeah my real name is kyle uh but in real life my F name part? is kyle the f i i kid you not like i was thinking like how can i make something with my name or my username um and i don't know i was just going through i kid you not i was like going through the alphabet and just trying everything like kyle a like that's stupid kyle b eh, doesn't work Kyle C. you know going through like that and i got the kyle started, f yeah. and it just flows you know like it it literally just rolls off of the tongue and that's what i wanted i wanted something that's kind of short um, and really just flows. Uh, you, you see usernames out there that are like 
I don't know. I'm thinking of like someone out there. I guess like, Scott, Scott's major. Scott's major. Yeah. Well, Scott Scott's original name is dang. That's a long name. Okay, it doesn't yeah. flow. It, it kind of flows, but it doesn't flow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas Scott's um, major does perfect. Right. So yeah, it's it's just like um, it's just something that I I, I kind of came Tommy up with in it randomly. Well, okay. Tommy yeah, in Tommy it. In it. Yeah. yeah. It flows. You know, it it it's two ish syllables, three syllables, I think actually. Um, but it flows, and it, it kind of gets mushed down into guy left. You know, and people yeah. make jokes out of it, and and people like it, so it, it works well i think because i mean because it, it, i think I, the thing with your name as well it works is that you you, you can either do kyle space f or you can yep. flow it all into one as kyle f like both ways work perfectly if that makes sense right exactly that's that's exactly what i wanted with it and because because it's not just kyle and then the letter f as well just for, for anyone who just hasn't really realized it's kyle e f f not yep. f it's like pronounced kyle f because that's yeah that's how it sounds so oh that's like literally just the origin story of your name did you have any other name before it or was this like when you started content creation the first one uh i did um um, I had an old name. I used to I used to be in the high pixel community, and before that, I was a RuneScape player, and that's how I came up with my original name. And I actually think the <laughs> the origin story of my original name is a pretty interesting one, because um, like I said, I used to play RuneScape a lot, and when I was a kid. And when I when I say that, I mean like probably I think I came up with my username probably 12, 13 years ago, uh, my original one when I was like ten yeah. years old. And there was a contest within RuneScape that someone won, and he won membership for life. Membership was for me it was for like five dollars a month, and my parents were paying for it. Thing. Um, but I wanted to win like something like that. And obviously as a 10 year old kid, I'm not going to be like adults that actually know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Uh, but his name was Excel and it was spelled E-X-C-L. And I just thought that was the coolest name for whatever reason. So I was like, how can I come up with something short like that? That just looks cool and sounds cool. I didn't really think about the sound part when I made it, but my original name was Xay, E-X-E-I-C. Um, and oh, that's cool. I, yeah. Well, when I, when I, when you write it out, it looks cool. Right. But when you say it, you don't really know how to say it. Like you say E X E I C, you know, like the E I makes it weird because I before E except after C, you know, and the C is and after. It's like, yeah, it's like when someone I. joins like your chat on Twitch and they follow you and their name's like uh, F W T I C, and it's like how do how do I pronounce this? Like how am I meant to welcome right. you in with that like with that name kind of thing? Exactly, and and so eventually that that just gets reduced down to X, and I used to go by X for a little while, E X, and then I took a step back from content creation uh, for a little while when I was a senior in high school, so, uh, freshman in college back in 2016 2017 and i came back or sorry i made the name kyle f while i was playing on a minecraft server with my friends college um i wasn't a, i wasn't a creator at the time i was like i just want to change my name um so i came up with kyle f that was history and then i started playing fortnite actually which was where i got affiliate on twitch and that's kind of around the time i started streaming that that eventually fell through i didn't really enjoy fortnite anymore and i i kind of fell back in love with minecraft and then i just started streaming minecraft now we're here and then now you're sitting on the inside mc podcast today yeah exactly it's I, my biggest moment yes let's go there we go put down the quote block right book oh my god why do i have to like <laughs> think about that word then quote yeah. book kyle f has said this is their biggest moment let's go <laughs> I, I don't really know if this is true or not, but to me it kind of is. I don't know how to explain it, to explain it but it feels like you kind of just came out of nowhere. Like, you don't... I mean, while doing the research, unless I just wasn't looking in the right places, it, was, it wasn't always easy to find, like, past stuff, if that makes sense. And then, like, yeah. I know you've had your Twitter account since 2021. You've been making... You've you've you got the Twitter account, give or take, around the same time as I had my Twitter account. But, like, right. as of recently, I don't really know how it happened, but I didn't... When I first joined this community, I only really found out about you recently. You've been in this community longer than I have, so I'm not saying I've been here longer but am i right. correct in saying you kind of just appeared out of nowhere or was there like i uh, was there like a period of time where you're kind of how i am if that makes sense like when i say how i am right now i mean with the podcast for example it's slowly growing i'm not saying i'm getting i'm not saying i'm becoming friends with like a bunch of the creators you are friends with but i'm still kind of growing as like does that make sense i don't and how to word it yeah, without like, no, I being, totally being taken out of context but yeah is, is, that, is that the same for you or did you kind of just pop out of nowhere and was like hey i'm i'm galif <laughs> Yeah, there was, a, there, I def, definitely didn't wake up one morning. and I, I am who I am today. It's been a process. And like I said, every every step I've taken along my 10-year content creation path has led me to where I am today. And by no stretch of imagination am I close to being a big content creator in my eyes. I'm, I'm still a relatively small creator that just so happens to have friends that are, are established. That's the point. Yeah, that's the point I was trying to get. I just sent out to word it. You did a much better job. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, 
But to, at the very beginning, I, I realized some point in, in college, um, and I, I went to college from university for the European people. I went, I went to universities, college, whatever, from 2017 to 2021. And you may be like, huh, interesting. There's a year that may stand out that there may have been some major world event that may have caused some major, this major changes every in the single world. person has the same give or take story after that years you're about to have right yeah i mine's a little bit different because i've always had a knack for content creation i've always wanted to be a content creator um ever since i was young i i, I used to post skyblock or sky wars commentaries like uhg highlights um from hypixel back in when i was in high school like 2014 2015 and that, that's where i met some of my close friends that are still in this community today uh, and some people that don't make content anymore and that's okay i still talk to them yeah that's where i started and then in college when i was a senior i was kind of like you know if, if i'm ever gonna make it as a content creator because that was always my dream but since i was a kid if, I, if i'm ever gonna make it in any stretch of the imagination this is the only opportunity i'm ever gonna have because if i don't start now i'm never gonna be able to because i wanted to obviously focus on my work my job when i'm done with college but i also wanted to do this because like i said it's a passion of mine it's something I've, I've wanted to do for such a long time and so i did it and and at the time tiktok was one of those tools that was like established in the scene as like a very good tool to start posting on social media on but it was also unknown um and so what i did was i used it in a way that i thought i would enjoy it um, so I originally started with like speed running random item Minecraft, like, oh, I'm going to get diamond block in Minecraft. I'm going to speed run it. Um, but it would be much simpler so I could record it within like 10 minutes and then edit it down within 20. And I would post that and it would do well. Um, and then I would stream on an SP with my friends that weren't really content creators, but they were, they weren't just Minecraft creators. And then eventually snowballed into what I would call the jump start of my career. I'll, I'll quotes around my career since it's not really my career. Um, I get what you mean, but yeah, yeah. jump sort of where you are right now. Exactly. I, I started a series on my TikTok account called Hardcore Hour, and a lot of my original audience, and actually, I, I attribute to the fact of why I got partner, comes from that series, where I would stream for an hour, or sometimes two, and I would try to get every single advancement in Minecraft, and I thought it was something unique oh, that not a lot of people yeah. would do. Yeah, and it, this was before I knew about, like, speedrunning community and all advancements runs and things like that. I just thought it was cool to, like, yeah. be able to say, I've gotten every single advancement in Minecraft. I, I didn't really see a lot of people doing it at the time, so I thought it would be a cool thing um and i did in hardcore mode and so i would do that and i it didn't do well for a little while but i just kept posting i kept posting and 50 some odd hours later i i had done it and i've gotten all of my advancements in minecraft and one of my one of my favorite moments was getting how did we get here because it was something that i didn't really know how to do um and i kind of just set up for a couple hours trying to figure it out without you know actually doing anything um and people loved it on tiktok it was it was by far one of the most successful things i think i racked up close to like 10 million views total on tiktok from that and i was by all means i that is where i grew like all of my growth came from tiktok at the beginning and at some point i was like i don't really have any friends to make content because my goal at the end of the day was um to be a content creator with other people not just for myself um but also use it as a tool to to find like-minded individuals that enjoy playing Minecraft, making content, just going from there. So I, I reached out to a bunch of Minecraft creators that I enjoyed, people that I thought made good content, um, people that I thought were funny. And eventually I got a message back. And I should preface this with a lot of people didn't respond at the beginning. And I'm not sure if it's just because they didn't see it, if it was an ego thing, but I messaged people that are around the same size, but whatever. Uh, I got a message back from somebody named Clipso and and Clipso actually was a lot larger than I was. I think I had 25,000. Yeah. yeah, Clipso, Clipso isn't really around, he, I attribute or I thank him for a lot of the opportunities I got at the beginning because without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, but I reached out and he reached out back to me and we played Bed Wars for a little while and then he introduced me to the server called One Try. He's like, look, I know you love hardcore. Like I just joined this hardcore Minecraft server. I think you'd be interested in it. And I was like, yeah, sounds great. Um, and so... Push comes to shove, I eventually joined the server called One Try. Um, and, and that is where I met a lot of my friends today. Um, and it's one of those servers that I have very fond memories of. Um, and a lot of my friends do as well. And like I said, it's where a lot of us met for the first time. I, I would attribute a lot of the Minecraft scene, if you can kind of connect the dots back to 2021, you'll find that a lot of people came from, from One Try SMP. And I, I don't even know what the original question was here, but that's kind of like my, my beginning. And yeah, One Try is, is where I kind of blossomed. Yeah. yeah, that's where I kind of blossomed into the creator I am today. 
today. Connections wise, um, finding my footing with, with working with people, um, et cetera. Um, I guess to backtrack very, really quickly, just for anyone who doesn't know what it is, what is, what is the achievement? Uh, how do we get here? Oh, how do we get here is um, having every effect in Minecraft uh, apply to you at one moment. It's the, very hard one of the, yes, very hard to do unless you're a speedrunner and you know the setups for it. In, in 1.20, it's a lot more difficult than than in 1.16, which is the version that I did it in. Um, that's actually, funny enough, the, the version that speedrun today. So a lot of yeah. the same setup is there. So if you watch like an all advancements run, let's say you watch Feinberg or something like that, you'll see he does the setup that is probably the best for it, obviously the best for it. Uh, but I did it the very janky way. Um, I think the, the TikTok is still up on my page today. So if you want to go check out my TikTok, I haven't posted there in a hot minute, so it won't take you too long to scroll through. But it's there. It's a very janky setup. And um, yeah. yeah, it's funny because I, I had Feinberg on the, on the podcast, like literally mm -hmm. the week before this, like the, the podcast comes out a week before this one. Oh, yep. It's funny that you mentioned him and then they're, they're, they're there. Yeah, yeah. Feinberg, Feinberg is a really, really cool guy, man. I, th I think he's super, super cool. Um, he's so good at what he does. I guess um, I kind of like, get, like going back to what you said so i went back to the achievement and i'm going back to what you previously said the whole like connections thing i mean it's kind of what happened with the podcast so i'm i'm not sure if you know too much about is that um like last year so today that we're recording this i was gonna make a tweet about it but i changed my mind is uh, officially the one year anniversary from when the podcast went on break uh, it went on break because i got a real life job uh, that was working night <laughs> shifts i was working i was working a job while doing the podcast originally but then when i got my new job it was night shifts and it just killed the podcast at, like instantly right. and today was the last time the podcast was uplo uploaded which was a year ago today and um essentially uh like where with like last year between april and october i was uploading podcasts every single week on inside mc that did what we're doing right now just like talking to people and yeah. uh, i had ant venom on the podcast uh but at the time so i emailed ant venom and one of his reasons for coming on the podcast was because of how professional the email was but i contacted a lot of people i sent a lot of twitter dms i uh i, I obviously when you said you it was crazy around about your size i was sh shooting for the stars very much so uh, and so it wasn't a surprise that people didn't get back to me but and then obviously I went on break and I came back this April podcast and I slowly got into it, got into it. And then now like some of the guests that I have scheduled to come on is just <laughs> unbelievable. And I don't really know how it's happening, but I, I it's kind of the same idea as what you did. You just took shots in the dark, one hit, yeah. and then it just spiraled into where you are now. And that's what I did. I took shots in the dark this year. Uh, I had Fulham come on, Feinberg, I have yourself on. I have a good few pe very cool guests planned to come on as well. And it's like, because of one shot in the dark and getting right. one person on the podcast, it's now constantly spiraling into other people coming on the podcast and you know so I, I can very much relate to you as well i'm trying to get out there absolutely that's what it's all about like a lot of people are afraid of reaching out to larger creators and i i actively open it because a lot of the time if you're not weird about it if you're if you approach it in a way that's like you said, professional, like you did to Ant Venom, then nine times out of 10, you'll at least get a response from somebody. Um, and that's, that's all it, that's all it takes. You know, it takes one time, make one first impression on somebody um, and then realize that like, oh, you're not like trying to use person file. You're not trying to be weird about it. You just, you're interested in make content. And if, if you're able to do that and, you know, prove that, you know, you make quality content or, or anything in between, you're not like, you're a, like a genuine person. Like I'll, I'll respond to anybody like, like I did for you. I, I, I have seen your rapport before. Now I played in events against you. Yeah, um, exactly. But you know, like it, it's it's like those types of things that really, really help you out um, long term. And this, this goes for anybody. Not I'm not saying this for you. I'm just no, saying no, for I anybody know, I know. in general. Yeah, yeah. Content creation. I, I guess it's like just a little to add to that as kind of my advice as well. It's like, for instance, with the podcast, it's very it's very clear that I mean, in my message to you and in my message to Feinberg, I say like, you know, I bring on s who I find interesting. I don't care about numbers. You know, I don't I don't like. Of course, of course, it's cool to have you and Feinberg on. Uh, of course, like you know, like l larger creators. Of course, and I'm I'm compared to me i'm i'm classifying you as a larger creator even though i hate the term it's just for the sake of what i'm saying here but like right you know it's it, it as much as it's cool when i said that i have some very very cool guests planned some of them are in quotation marks larger but then a lot of them are, are the same size as me it's just people because i enjoy just talking to people and i think that shows as well with the fact that the podcast is i'm uploading two a week i'm uploading two podcasts every single week so it's clearly very very clearly i'm passionate about it very very clearly i wanted to do well and for a very long yep. period of time and i haven't said this on the podcast before and i was going to say it, and I probably will say it again when I do the other uh, when I do the midweek MC regarding it. But like for a very very long time, when I started to get responses from people who I got responses from, I seen in my head. Now I'm starting to think, oh my god, like you know, oh, does it look like I'm being? But then and then I thought, and it's kind of like you mentioned before, you uh, before like off the podcast, that like you coming on the podcast is you talking about you, or how I said it too is you coming on podcast is you talking about you. You know, right. so I shouldn't feel too bad because as much as I'm having you on, I'm not really. Sorry, I don't know how to explain it. It's not like it's, it's benefiting me, but. It's
but it's not it's not benefiting me only me you know what i mean like it's giving you a place to talk about you kind of thing yeah it's a platform you know it's something that's not very common in the space which i which i appreciated when when you reach out to me there's not a lot of podcasts out there for the minecraft space um especially for our subnet i'll call it um, yeah. because there's obviously the larger like i'll call the banter podcast I'll not call it. It is a banter podcast of, of Sapnap and, and Carl and George. Um, and they do their thing. And it's obviously part of the Minecraft community in some way, but it's not the Minecraft. Um, I feel like this is really attached to the internals of what it is. And, and you get to know the creator in that way, which I think is very cool. Exactly. And I, like I said, I have a wide, I constantly have a wide range of people coming on. I've, I've made the mistake of like scheduling podcast recordings up until the week before Christmas. And then like, there's a yeah. wide range of people. And that, I guess, I guess that's why it helps as well. Like, cause this is an original concept. And I realized that this hadn't really been done before. You know, it's kind yeah, of like, with, you, like with, the, with the whole like Twitter thing, like no one really does what you do with the Twitter videos. And unless I'm just looking in the wrong places. I mean, I guess like some people do, obviously some people do podcasts, but like that whole idea, is original to you and makes you stand out as a person kind of thing you know yeah exactly i guess sorry we kind of went on to talk about the podcast and my bad it just again it just happened moving back into talking about you a bit more then uh, away yeah. from how you came into the content creation scene we're now going to talk about uh, different types of content that you do uh, so we're not going to touch too much on hardcore because I know you still do hardcore content, but you kind of talked about it. I want to touch on the topics that you haven't really mentioned too much. Uh, let's start with SMPs. So I feel sure. like as much as you're a general Minecraft content creator, as of right now, and correct me if I'm wrong here, this is just my personal view on it. You are, as of right now, more known as an SMP content creator. I would say so. Yeah, um, people, I, I would say the the wider Minecraft audience knows me from, from SMPs that I'm on, that I have been on, but they don't really know me. So that's what I would say. The first SMP you was a part of, and I don't think this is the first, I mean, it's not the first ever one you was in, but I guess like the first mm -hmm. one that I found as, well, not notable, but just to talk about was Outsiders. Yes. So was, that was would would you say that was the first like in quotation marks biggish one you've been on or like uh, do, do you think it your, kickstarted things? Yeah, it depends on your definition of big. I think the outsiders server had a very interesting um growth okay. because from the beginning it was a group of creators from one try that wanted to do a story-based server similar this is around the time the dream smp story was really really popping and they all decided you know what let's let's do it you know um and they they, they kind of attached to a story of of the maze runner and they found a map and they thought it was interesting and they just ran with it and originally i wasn't i wasn't part of the original cast um so i was always on the outside looking in and something i really wanted to be part of because i thought it was really really cool oh, you weren't on the original uh, cast no i was not uh, oh okay so okay so with outsiders i remember how yes. i mentioned before that i don't always do like deep deep research on things because i i want to like just genuinely hear it for the first time and uh, this was yeah. this was roman's research uh so you were i thought you i, I just assumed you were what so so what's was the whole deal with you and outsiders then <clears throat> yeah um so i wasn't on the original cast there was a group of i think i think 12 people that it was and I, like i said a lot of them were my friends i i knew them very very well and after a little while, they decided we're going to open up applications. And they did it in a unique style where they were one of the first, if not the first, to do video applications. And that's oh, where okay. people kind of got that idea from. And they, the idea was make a video about yourself um, that kind of displays you as a character um, and your story making ability. And it kind of spiraled into what video applications are today. Um, and it's obviously transformed for different SMPs for different things. But me and my friend Akko uh, thought it'd be a good idea to kind of kind of do one together since we both wanted to join. Um, and I kind of came up with the idea of doing a joint application that kind of told a story. Ooh, um, and, okay. and I thought I thought it was very unique at the time that a lot of, not a lot of people were telling a story with their applications. So we kind of came up with this this tandem application that had an intertwining story that. If you watch one of my application, let's just say, you had to watch Akos because they, they there has there's bits and pieces of it that tie us together, tie our characters together in a certain Which is uh, smart. That's a smart idea. Yeah, and, and so it led to a unique relationship on the server on Outsiders, um, where we had a unique story and worked very well, I thought. Um, and people seemed to really enjoy it. Obviously the, the the team behind Outsiders really enjoyed what we had. Um, and so we I got accepted alongside a couple of my friends, some of my friends from Outsiders, some of my best friends to this day. So yeah, we, we had a very unique relationship um, with Outsiders. Obviously, we knew them from the beginning um, and then getting onto it was just like anyone else. You could argue that we had a bit of a leg up since we actually knew them. But, you know, I'm not going to get into that conversation.
question. But that doesn't that doesn't matter. I mean, it's for instance, like with the podcast, like you had a leg up of being invited because I knew you. <laughs> you know, like people, I, I always I always say to people, if you reach out, you're happy. Like, uh, you know, come like, please reach out if you want to come on the podcast. But like a lot of the people who I bring on are, are people who I've reached out to. So I yeah. guess it's not the best of comparisons, but the idea is there. You know, like, of course, like you, because I've reached out to you because I knew you, that kind of helped you a bit. Not helped yeah. you per se, because you're still like coming on my podcast. But yeah, I mean, like it, it, been, it like worked out better. I guess right exactly this was a question from Roman um, okay so if you have if you have something to do this is what was one of their suggested questions and it was did outsiders change your perspective on content creation that is a good question I don't think it changed my perspective I think it opens a new a new challenge um, and that that sounds strange but the content creation is not one set path I think content creation can be multiple paths and you have to be able to kind of flow in between different states I think so beforehand it was kind of, I'm going to log on to Minecraft and I'm going to play it today. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk while I play. I'm going to talk in my chat. That's it. Um, yeah. And it's very, it's a, that's a very, very common strategy across Twitch. It doesn't matter the game. You'll see people doing that wherever you look. Um, outsiders open the perspective of you can do a live story and do all the planning behind the scenes, almost like a TV show. Um, think of like Saturday Night Live or something like that. Obviously not to the same scale or to the same depth, but you can make a live performance. Um, almost in a theatrical way on, on Twitch. And I think it, I think it's a very, very interesting avenue to do. Um, you saw all the time, again, with Dream SMP, Outsiders. I still do it today with uh, Pyrus SMP. And, and it's it's kind of branched out and you'll see you'll see live SMPs do like live almost uh, episodic streams all the time. So like I said, it, it's opened a new a new tool in my toolbox to have I'll call it my lore mode um, where I'll switch into a character that's not Kyle F. It's Kyle the pirate or Kyle the outsider. You know, it's ex exclamation, um, mark, ex exclamation mark P Kyle or something, right? Is it, is it yeah, like, is yeah, that that's like my like pirate Kyle. Yeah. That, that's like the whole thing. Or like canonical, whatever, you know, yeah, outsider yeah. sky, whatever it may be. Yeah, I mean, fair play. What, uh, you didn't really, unless you, unless you did touch on it, I just didn't realize, but I don't think you did. What exactly made you want to, other than getting into this SMP, what made you think like, yeah, I want to go down the role play content creation route. Why, why did you enjoy it? Why is this something that you wanted to do? Um, to be honest with you, it was the hap thing to do at the time. Um, if you remember at the time, Dream SMP streams with a story, if you put lore in your notification and you were on Dream SMP, that stream was getting a minimum of 100,000 views. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just something that people like follow the trend for. And uh, to be honest with you, that's how I started doing it. Like, I, I just want to be part of the trend of like, oh, lore SMPs are, are cool. You know, it, it, it ended up being something that I really, really found an interest in. I thought the creative process behind it was really, really enjoyable. Um, that's why I still do it to today. There's obviously benefits to it where I'll always have a little bit more of a viewership boost if I'm doing a lore stream or something like that because you want to be there when it happens live and you don't get the same type of reaction you get Twitter going but it like the creative process behind the scenes was really enjoyable to me um, and I got to learn a lot of tools and stuff like sound design and creative process that I, I don't know I never would have been able to do if I didn't do Outsider and I still use it to today like I'm like I'm, I work on stuff for Pirates now um, where I, I, I do a little bit more of an intricate sound design and put layering behind stories and characters um, and world building and, and things like that that I would have never done before uh, if I didn't do Outsiders. So yeah, that kind of answers earlier's question and Out Outsiders was yeah. essentially what, you know, kickstarted like a lot. Because you remember how earlier when I asked the question about like, was Outsiders kind of your first like big SMP kind of thing? I, yep. I, that technically answers that it would be yes, right? So obviously the yeah. prior SMP led into Outsiders, but Outsiders was where you started to learn everything, where you started to get everything done. Yeah, that kind pretty of much. Idea. After that then, you mentioned Pirates a lot, uh, but before we get into talking about Pirates, we will talk about that, is uh, the PAL Creations Rats SMP. So as far as I'm aware, and once again, fact check me here if I'm wrong. You were a guest appearance on Rats SMP, right? I was, yes. You I weren't was a guest. Actually a part I was of a it. My, no, there there is a story behind as to why I was not on the Rats SMP. Um, and it something simply boils to down into? to oh, you are okay. <laughs> yeah, it simply boils down to that my schedule doesn't line up with uh, a lot of the people on the server. <laughs> uh... um, so it ended up working out best for me to be a guest. Um, and so I was a guest with Nukery and Watermunch, um, <laughs> who are two excellent, excellent content creators in the scene um and we played as termites and it was very fun i i, I actually was uh, part of the group that helped beta test the uh rats smp before it launched um so i got to experience being part of the house part of the the, the experience beforehand kind of finding bugs and it was it was a lot of fun honestly i thought rats was very unique um and i i am very proud of oppo and owen for, for taking that leap because after outsiders they knew that they wanted to kind of level up and i think they did a great
great job finding a great team to work with to level up the content and it's developed into into a huge operation uh, yeah i mean uh we've it was the second midweek S um midweek mc where ajax and i sat down and was talking about smps and one of it one of our things were like power creations have always done such a good job of being like i'm not every smp is original in its own sense but like the idea of rats living in a house with special like appearances of like pigeons or like termites or whatever and then now the right. idea of pirates smp is like it's always been such a good good concept which is hard to do but they've done it kind of thing and then you get to be a part of it and experience it as well which is really really cool absolutely yeah it, it takes it takes a, an entire team to get that all done and they've done a great job being able to manage themselves and develop themselves and put themselves or put them put the right people around them to be able to deliver on it was your appearance for a day a week or oh, how did that it was work? a day it was it was one stream it was like a, a, a lead performance where we had a set goal a set objective and and we delivered on it i i, I don't remember the specifics honestly right now but i, I think it had to do with something of, of getting us out of the house essentially and they ended up i i assume eating that right <laughs> yep yeah we got trapped in a tree um afterwards and and then they went on their way merry way back to the house and we were never to be seen again rip rip um rip time like how exclamation mm -hmm. mark t kyle <laughs> yeah exactly uh and then that leads into perfectly into pirates smp now which you are a part of really. i am part of yes yes i am fully part of it um pirates is super it's i really really awesome enjoy game. pirates smp yeah and you're um, very good at role playing on it i i because you stream obviously being like you're american and you work as well uh, which yes. is if you're comfortable we'll talk a little bit about that later on as well yeah. like the whole working thing so because of that you stream very very late into the night for me and i work mornings now which is really cool uh for my schedule it also means yeah. i can't always make a kof stream uh, so <laughs> i do miss out sometimes on a lot of streams but you are someone who i i mean i like i lurk a lot in echo streams i lurk a lot in like apo streams etc etc but I, I you are someone who i very rarely i do this i actually i go back and vod watch your streams sometimes like the role play ones i appreciate that yeah uh, you do a very very good job of role playing you are very very and said i'll give you that much cow boosting your ego you. here a little Thank bit you. <laughs> but yeah so so how did how did that all work how did you how was the whole process of you getting invited to pirates smp um i'm not going to get into specific specific well, details yeah, not, yeah, as to the that. process of it yeah. um but they essentially boiled down to oppo and owen approached me they said we have this idea we think you'd be great for it are you interested and i said yeah of course and mm. so we worked out some fine details for scheduling and such and ended up working out and then from there it just became a process of me kind of coming up with my character they gave us a couple of ideas as to what the the faction islands will be about which is the, the main island for pirates and i kind of developed my character based on the information i was given so uh, my character, I haven't really gotten the chance to explore too, too much. I'm, I'm currently working on a stream for that right now. And I'm very excited for that one because I think, I think my character is a very unique one and has a unique stories. Um, so I'm very excited to, to be able to tell that story, um, at the same time as fit it into the overall picture of the server. So I think, uh, the Pirates SMP server has a really, really unique story, um, that people will see and people will be like, holy crap, like what the hell is going on? Because to be honest with you, sometimes I have no idea what the hell is going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, that it helps me tell a better story. I, I love not knowing things and experiencing them live. So like uh, getting to meet the characters and stuff. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, this character's turned to stone. What? Um, like I, I don't fully grasp it until the moment it happened. Um, and it, it's led to some unique storytelling. And the creative team behind it, No Name Studios, is so, so good at what they do. They are one of the most credible development teams I've ever worked with as, in terms of world building and, and delivery. Uh, the characters and NPCs that we get to talk to, they have like custom chat GPT driven, like AI behind it. It's so cool. So, so cool. I guess like with that then, talking more generalized SMP, which all, I mean, you can link this into Pirates and talk about like your reasoning for it and stuff like that on Pirates SMP, uh, which would be perfect. It's just like more of a general like SMP question. So you, you said you, you get to pick your own law, right? Yeah. Like, so I, I see the thing is, I don't know too much about SMPs. I watched them, but I always thought like your story, not your story per se, but like your idea for law was always chosen for you. I never knew you got to pick your own, like everything on your own. What made you like, I know, I know you've kind of touched on it, but like a bit, I guess a bit, uh, a bit to add to it if you can. What made you choose the route that you were, you've gone down so far? Like, I know you said you based it on kind of what they gave you, but was there any specific reason as to why you've chosen? And I guess for the viewer, can you, can you give a little rundown of what your story is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for, for my character, my character is a Kestrel. And for those that don't really follow the series or, uh, or don't really know, Kestrels are, are driven by wealth, money, like um, it, basically like the billionaires of the world. That's the motive behind it. Um, 
and so I had I had an idea behind the character of I wanted to attach it to something that I was passionate about in real life, um, as well as fit it into the overarching. Story. And and kind of like what you said, it, it, you don't really know um, what the the real story is till you get into it. Like when we're building characters and stuff like that, it's not a it's not a set thing for us. Like Owen and Apple didn't tell, sit me down and say you are going to be a Kestrel. This is what you're going to tell. Um, yeah. They have a story and they tell us your character is yours. You build it the way that you want it and we will help you facilitate it as long as it doesn't interfere with the story. So if I wanted to go a different route and, and be like a happy, peace-loving builder or a, a swashbuckling, people-killing pirate, I could have been. But I chose this route for a reason. And like I said, I have a stream coming up in the future that I want to I want to do that kind of dives a little bit deeper into my pirate's past in story. Um, because I think, I think I've done a unique job of telling the story. I just need to finish the stream, quite honestly. But I have a goal and a set of objective that will be told for the server uh, on the server and it'll be cool I'm, I'm very excited for that so then how does so then how does like the actual law stream work then because you have your own story and like i said i lurk a lot in echo streams for example and uh like i always see them going around and looting bases and you know killing mobs and stuff like that so like that's just casual play but then how do you how do you how do you change like change up like that i okay I, i'm gonna it's gonna give me a minute here to kind of explain what i'm trying to get at here so just give me a second but like do you mean for, the difference between like like a big lore day or just like casually on the island yeah like so like so yeah yeah American. so like say you say you went live to the, to, right off this podcast right and he went live tomorrow and today you were just casually streaming paris smp right yeah and then but then th tomorrow there's a big law day and then monday you're casually streaming paris smp but then you're streaming with somebody else is it like today you're just you sunday obviously you're in character and then on and then monday would you also be in character or how does how does that all work um i tend to play off of the situation that i'm in so like like you said if i go live right now and i'm just like on pirates just like making money then i'm not gonna be in character for the most part yes, but you. There, there's elements of the world and you really have to watch and and, and understand what's going on to to like understand this but there's moments where i purposefully ignore some things or i or i go a certain way um for story reasons because it either interferes with my immersion as a character or it interferes with the overall story like i will per people will say certain things in, in my chat like metagaming for example like oh akko did this or or owen Which did this annoying, or Scott. yeah it, it's not necessarily annoying but i choose to ignore it for for my character because i and I don't know. It 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 it, it kind of is. I, or I'm kind of a product of my situation half the time. Like if tomorrow, uh, I don't know, Grace is doing a stream where she is in character fully, and I bump into her. Um, I have this habit where I, I pop up the person's stream right before I interact with them just to see what their life is like in that moment. So if I notice that she's in character, I'm gonna go in character. But if she's not in character, and I can kind of tell. I can. I, I've been around these people for so long that I can kind of get a read on what they're trying to accomplish um, based on their demeanor and their introduction. Um, I can get into character. I can get out of character. It's a very, it's a very important skill on a server like this um, to be able to go in between yourself and your character and knowing where that fine line is. But then, how do you, how do you define to your viewers or newer viewers? Say like I can't join your stream. How will I say like I'm a completely new person, never talked yeah. to you before, never watched any of your streams? How do I know if you're in character or if this is just you? Do you like pin a message? Is there like, um, like um, once again, for the sake of the viewer here, how will I join your stream and know that? Like, say I'm watching, find out for you, finding about out about you for the first yeah. time because this podcast and i go to watch your stream how will i know you're in character or just being you the easiest way to tell if you go onto one of my streams is if i have my face cam on or not um i tend to keep mine off when i'm in character because i think it breaks a level of immersion um but if i have it on i'm t i tend to be just me Okay. Um, so that's like the biggest that's like the biggest thing for me um is if i have my camera off nine times out of ten i'm in a character or i'm just having a bad hair day like yesterday <laughs> i considered streaming without a camera on because I, I was like all sweaty i didn't shower before stream i i i think it's very useful to have the camera off when i when i am in character because people can just like be with the character they're not with me at the moment i obviously yeah. like interact with my chat and stuff and and to to make it a level of immersion i have my chat called parrots and so i have a, a pet parrot Parrot on the server that I use is like my way to communicate with the chat and talk to the parrots and you know level love make oh, yeah, the immersion okay. a real thing yeah but then 
is it like i mean i know you're probably good at it now but would you say it's a hard skill to have just a switching from i i imagine like say you're live right say you're yeah. live and you're just being you but then you bump into gracie who I, i'm just yeah. using an example because she used it earlier and they're in character so yeah. i'm assuming while you're on stream you have to then switch into character do you do you change your voice you change the way you act. for instance i like with the pod i have a podcast mm -hmm. voice i'm not sure if you noticed from how i was speaking to you before the podcast and during the <laughs> podcast and people know yeah. this but if you watch my streams you notice i have a podcast voice right do you have a a role play voice or a role play act or do, do you get what i mean when i say that yeah i i tend to get a bit softer uh, i think that's one of the things i've noticed with my with my characters i'm not as boisterous as i usually am like i'm very like in your face sometimes when i'm when i'm streaming yeah. um, but when i'm in character i tend to back off that character a little think about my environment um and i and, and and so i i tend to get a bit softer when i speak um and if like if I'm casually streaming and and Gracie bumps into me and she's like you know doing her character like as you said um I'll I'll, I'll keep my camera on <laughs> um because I know that I'm gonna be out of it but for the sake of her stream I'll act in a certain way a certain demeanor and thankfully for me I've I've made my character in a way where I can be a little bit more boisterous and and kind of in your face a little bit similar to how I stream normally so. Um, it ends up not being a, a bad thing when I am just like in, in my regular mode and then have to go to the lore mode. It must get like, I don't know, I feel like, it, I feel like it's just a hard skill to have is the whole switching between like you and like having a character i feel like it's just such a unique skill and very hard to do but also very yeah cool. at the beginning it was i'll be honest it was kind of cringe at the beginning like it's really cringe if you think about it if i told my family this dude that i have to role play in a minecraft server that's weird dude like oh, your seriously. family don't know that you do that they do oh but i get <laughs> not, not the specifics of it yeah yeah like they know that i that i like play a character not to this level but like they play a character i play a character on stream because my dad my dad loves to make accentuate of it when we talk to people and they're meeting someone for the first time they love to bring it up that i'm oh that like oh my son's a minecraft streamer like he he loves the stream he's like hey johnny how you doing hey jimmy how you doing like stuff like that you know like over eccentric um that's how i am like i i definitely what's it called the, i definitely play it up a little bit i'm not me like when i'm on stream but i'm me if that makes sense i'm i i, I put on a, a kyle f persona yeah, put on my that. kyle f hat yeah I mean, if you wanted to, could every single stream just be you role playing? Like, would it be you, like if if is, is that like an option, or do you sometimes just have to be your like your actual self? If, if I wanted to, yeah, but I I don't find it fun because when I'm in character, I find it difficult for me to read the chat without breaking that character. Yeah, um, and that's one of the biggest things that I love about streaming is being able to interact with my chat. So I I, I don't love what's the word? I don't love being in lore mode all the time. I think it's exhausting. I think it it ruins the the server. I feel like the audience is like um oh, i have to catch up on this two hour stream every single day if i stream five days in a week i stream for two hours each that's 10 hours that you could miss you know yeah I um, that. so I, I don't want to do that and that's I, that's why i've been trying to find a balance of doing different things whether it be you know pirates or or i speed run today and then i play hardcore tomorrow and then i you know it, 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 i find a balance for the viewer because i think it's more interesting that way yeah that makes sense i yeah. thought they, they were just more general smp questions because i just thought it'd be the perfect time yeah, to for ask sure. for them. Uh, do you have anything else i mean before we before we talk about Caboodle SMP, is there anything else you want to mention about pirates or any of that or that I haven't asked? Stick around. The story's about to get crazy. For you or in general? General. General. Oh. For me, the server. About to get fun. Okay. All right. And then uh, Caboodle SMP. Uh, yeah. I remember I had Bumpy Jake on the podcast. I assume you know mm -hmm. who that is. They work on Caboodle SMP as well. For mm -hmm. anyone who doesn't know. Uh, they One of the things they said was that Caboodle SMP is more of a like, role-playing kind of TV show kind of idea. Yes. It's not really an SMP per se. Uh, you yes. have a you have a clip that I... There's a clip that I've been sent. I can't remember it. Um, Oh god, I can't even be able to find it. It's like of uh, you doing a little rap uh, when when you was asked to be when you was asked to do like a line or something. You decided to add to the end of it um, a <laughs> yeah. little rap. What was what was going through your head at the time to do that? Um, if you if you talk to Caboodle or to Jake, who I send my voice lines to, I, I yeah, so yeah, I so whoever it is that I send my voice lines to, I I do the line. And for whatever reason, like I just switch out a character. I'm like, I just say shit. No, there's something. I think that's, something that's like you're going to the toilet it. or or showering. I can't remember. I think Jake posted it on Twitter, but I, I, I yeah, he did. I, I don't remember. 
I just like say things, man. That's, that's like the the easiest <laughs> way I can put it. I just say things, and and I, I think it like breaks the the tension for a second. Like you're not really expecting me to say whatever I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it just happens, and you're like, oh, you know. I I, I love like that kind of humor where I, it, it's like shock value. So that's why it's I like, did it. Yeah, it's like sitting down for dinner with your family and then just out of nowhere like saying the most outrageous thing ever. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. It's a exactly. Value, yeah, I get it. Oh, outrageous! Like not not in a bad way. Outrageous. You, yeah, I just like in a jokey way. Okay, for anyone who things i sit down with my family and say no i don't okay i mean it like that for confirmation before anyone twists twist my word there but what is your what is your um involvement with kabuto smp then um, so I joined a Kabuto SMP about a year ago now. Um, it was something that someone approached me and said, you should join. And I said, I can't just join. So I made an application and it was something that I was kind of proud of in the moment because it was an opportunity for me to kind of flex my creative muscles. Um, and I, I think I told a pretty unique story um, while doing it. And I obviously got accepted and a Kabuto approached me and said, hey, just want to let you know, like, can't can put you in the server now, but for the next season, we want you in. I was like, okay, whatever, that's fine. And uh, Kabuto SMP has been unique for me since I, my my first ever stream on the server was two weeks ago and there's okay. a lot of things that kind of led up to that but so i was on the server for a year my character was known for about a year but i it, it wasn't my character until about a couple weeks ago so it's it's been like you said a unique experience and it's not something that i can just log on to every single day it, it's become kind of a tv show yeah and then so what is your like what is your like role play though like what is your because we mentioned your character with pirates what's your what's your character in caboodle my character on caboodle is very villain-esque it's it's definitely the main villain of this season oh. and there's a whole story behind that okay. and I, I don't want to spoil anything about it oh, i am a bad spoil guy. It. yeah yeah yeah, Actually, so okay, yeah. Things are about to start ramping up in there. Um, there's a stream tonight for it on Saturday the twenty first. Um, and then it'll kind of snowball into the rest of the season. And then is this is this the first ever season you've been in? Because I can't remember. You you said about you joining the next season, but would that be how many seasons have you been in? I should say instead. Um, I was in it the first season the very end i was in i was introduced in the very end season um and it was just like me literally appearing from a lightning bolt um okay. but i wouldn't say i was like in it no yeah and what season are we on now then two we're on season two. Oh, okay all right so you're still pretty fresh in got you yep with that then uh, let's move into remember how early i said we was going to talk about the mcyt hot take tweet oh yeah we're gonna go into that now and uh, okay. i'm gonna start by mentioning something that you said earlier on the podcast I want to okay. talk about pirates. You said about the whole streaming it. You don't want to stream it in role play all the time. Uh, bloody, bloody, blah. One thing yeah. I saw, and I'm not sure if it was quote retweeting your tweet or it was somebody's, and it was a very hot take, and I just want to get your views on it. And it, yeah. was, it, was, it was something along the lines of like, SMPs that are streamed, but videos aren't made out of them are a bit tedious like stream smps for instance like i don't know i know pirates smp isn't fully one of those because i've seen people upload videos of it but a lot of the times like you said if you're always in law we have to go back and vod watch to watch the law because not everybody makes videos out of it what, yeah i want to start by asking because it links into both the tweet and smps kind of the, the gap here what is what is your thoughts on that specific take there uh i think it's a completely valid take there's there's reasons why people don't make videos on lore SMPs and they're strictly for streams. And the the simple reason is it kind of boils down to it doesn't do well on YouTube. So yeah. why why am I gonna put the effort in for something that I know is not gonna do well? It's not it's not gonna get drive engagement. It, it gives a lot, it's a lot of work that I don't have to do because it's not gonna give me a lot of benefit. Um, and obviously there's people that do do that. I think Martin is a great example. Owen is a great example of, of doing that. Yeah. Um, so they they've done a great job of being able to create a Netflix. I think Owen has mentioned the fact that he he wants this channel to be like a Netflix uh, of stories that he's told of his characters. Um, and I think that's cool. I think it's really, really unique. But for me, for example, I, I think it's exhausting when you have to watch every single stream, be in the moment every single time and follow it all up. I just think that for my character, for example, I'm not going to make videos out of it. I'm going to make my streams the way that I want to make them. And if you want to follow my character, you have to watch my streams. And that's just that's just the way I want to operate it. You know, um, yeah. I'm not going to make a stream. I'm not going to make a video out of my my pirate stuff. So that that's just my perspective on it. Like, I, I think people, again, have a totally valid take with it. Um, I don't 
think though that you should feel like you have to watch every single detail of a, of a server to understand it. You can get a very good gist of what's going on by just watching one perspective. A lot of the main story aspects of that is that. And then then you attach to a character. You want to watch their stuff, so you watch their stream, you know, or you go back and watch their VODs. But let's just say that character has 20 hours of, of war moments for like two weeks straight. You're not going to be, you're, it's, it's impossible to keep up. So I try to break it up and segment it because I, I understand it's very difficult for a viewer to digest at all you feel like it's just sometimes a bit un unlucky then like because it's not really ever going to be a way i mean you upload you upload your vods anyways you upload your vods to youtube so people can watch your vods but like i'm yep. and i guess just this is just a general question which I, i'm once again i think i know the answer to i'm gonna ask you anyways you make it very clear when in your title when you're doing a law stream right mm -hmm. so i do go i i to your vods channel right. they could yep. they know which ones are law and which ones are just general playing right Yep, I, I make sure to make it very well known what the stream is. So like if I'm just making money, uh, I, I market it in a certain way. And then um, even with my notifications, I'm very intentional with my notifications of the delivering it um but if it's a lore stream i'll do it in a way that like i feel like matches it's almost like the title of a book you can think of it that way but if it's if it's not a lore stream then i just kind of like mess around you know that's how i do it oh yeah yeah okay that was just a general question and then yeah. um like with the whole with the whole tweet thing the whole uh the hot takes regarding mcyt in general there's also like another one where um like streamers aren't really part of mcyt i didn't really agree with that because i feel like mcyt is just generalized as just a minecraft content creator community it is it's, hmm. it's a lot easier than equal calling it like mct uh, mct which is mc twitch or you know yeah. like mccc like minecraft content creators like mcyt just flows so i think it's that's I, that's why it's just generalized as even like content creators now just generalized as mcyt yeah. i guess like I, I just again don't have to go too much into that because i don't want our words getting like mistaken but did you kind of disagree with what i said there if it's a vanilla statement with mcyt they are correct that streamers are not mcyt because it literally stands for minecraft youtubers but is, but is it streamers are not but should it be taken as a vanilla statement i don't think that it, it should be personally yeah, because do I. yeah i it, it, when you talk about mcyt there's no you could say minecraft community and that that is a generalized statement i think that's a valid way to go about it um but i don't know mcyt just works and you know if if they don't make videos they they can still be mcyt but they're not maybe youtubers oh, exactly. suck an egg because because i used to be because i used to make i i recently announced um i think it's two days ago from when i'm recording this that like i've kind of given up on the insane orbits youtube channel i'm still keeping the insane orbits persona i'm still going to stream on the insane orbits twitch and when i applied to stuff i'm still going to be under the insane orbits name because i don't really want to be under the inside mc name for like a tournament for example but yeah like just youtube wise i just don't really want to do anymore mainly because i mean uploading two podcasts a week and i do everything is a little bit tough it can be yeah. it can be very tough but like so but i still want to be involved in the mcyt community give or take like i still want to be known as yeah. insane orbits i still want to be involved with like you, you like yourself for example as insane i know you're on inside mc right now but you're still in, you're still talking to insane orbits you know what i mean so yeah absolutely yeah. you're the host of the show yeah exactly it's just yeah i'm insane orbits host of inside mc but i'm still insane orbits as like the actual person yep uh do you have any do you have any hot takes like what what are your what are your thoughts regarding minecraft content creation as a whole kind of two two questions that are linked into one answer it how you like yeah. how do i feel about it no, sorry, um, sorry sorry so like what are your thoughts on content creation as a whole and do you have any hot takes yourself regarding like mcyt yeah i i've posted my hot take and i think that people think too much about content if you look today on you I'm, I'm only talking about youtube by the way right yeah, now. yeah if you look on youtube it's very cookie cutter very in your face um hyper analyzed like um thumbnails are a certain way packaging is in a certain way the editing style is in a certain way oh my team killed this guy or i stole this item you know s stuff like that um and it's very conflict based very plot driven based i don't know that's not what i grew up with. so maybe it's just me but i i don't enjoy that style of youtube it's not the type of content that i want so my my generalized hot takes like just do youtube for fun like make content for fun that's why i do it um if i was doing this to to make this my full-time career i would have quit a long time ago i yeah. think i i'm still here i still am in this space because i i enjoy it it's one of my hobbies my passions it's been my dream for a long time and i i'm certainly not the most successful creator nor am i the most consistent but i i do it when i want to and it just so happens that i want to do it a lot but i i feel like the process behind it like having to have this mindset that you have to have every perfect especially for youtube videos kind of sucks really like it obviously is very successful on youtube but I, I, I don't think it's it's fun for a creator. It's it's mentally exhausting. You've seen it over the past couple of years. People just drop out, honestly, of content scene. Because I'm like I just mentioned awesome there, I did it. it. On yeah. my on my main exactly. insane orbit account because I just wanted to upload videos that I enjoyed and now it's become such a right. career driven 
platform if that makes sense exactly like, i can't really yes. do what i want to do anymore. right so and and I, i've kind of taken this approach recently where i, I want to just kind of go back to a stripped down format where uh i it's it's very simplistic it's very just me you know you don't fall in love with the content you fall in love with content created i vibe um, yeah and you could you could think about it a couple different ways um people like to you know make videos that do well but are, are they enjoying you as a creator or are they enjoying the content that you're are you a content creator or are you a personality um and i i've kind of taken the position where I want to be a personality rather rather than a content. Obviously, you, you it's synonymous with itself, but um, there there's people out there that are just content creators. They make content, they make good content, but it's not about the person. You could make you could put me behind it and put the same video out there, and people would still enjoy it. You know, it's it's content. Yeah, but it's just the idea, not the person. Right. That's why I've kind of fallen in love with streaming and simple like YouTube concept of you fall in love with the creator, want to know more about the creator, enjoy the creator. And that's it takes a lot longer to build that kind of report. But it, it it is this idea of longevity. It's, it's the goal for longevity, not the goal. It's it's kind of the key. You look at I'll call them evergreen creators. And that's the people like Jack Septicai, PewDiePie. You don't watch their content because it's the best content you've ever seen. Watch their content because you really enjoy the person that's making. It. And that's what I, I, I strive to be. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's once again, sorry, I know I'm, I'm talking about the podcast again, but I, I've mentioned this to previous people. Like I, I talk about myself to show that I relate to what you're saying. Uh, I just the best way I kind of can do that. And it's like with the podcast, that's why I love the podcast so much, because like as much as I'm talking to you about you, I'm still talking about myself. People are still getting to know me slowly and slowly. Like, yes, yeah, it's, it's your podcast, but they're still knowing about me and they're learning about you. And that's why like I feel like the podcast is very much driven on people are only going to listen. People only listen to the podcast if they care about me or they care about the creator right. I'm bringing on. For instance, midweek mc that's why i introduced the idea of midweek mc the one that's come out so this podcast comes out next friday the midweek mc that's coming out two days before this which is going to be recorded on wednesday should be talking about mcc live right mm -hmm. but like people are only going to watch that if because everyone, everyone can go and watch MCC Live themselves. They can read through the tweets. But people are only going to watch that specific podcast if they care about what I have to say or what AJX right. has to say. Or I'm hoping to bring somebody on. Uh, who knows? Maybe I haven't. Maybe I maybe I have. Uh, like regarding just that whole event, which I won't get too much into. But just in case nothing happens for that sake. But you know, like they, they care about that kind of idea, and that's that, that's the route that I've taken with the podcast is to kind of just be me. I mean, I've done it today. I've yeah. shared my views on stuff that I've asked you questions about because that's just how it works. You know? Yeah, absolutely that's what that's what podcasts are it's just like you know, talking you know we're just yeah, having a conversation about stuff exactly and that's and that's why i enjoy it so much so yeah yeah fair i mean i by the way i completely agree sorry in case it hasn't become apparent i completely agree with what you're saying um and like that's why i kind of left my yeah. main channel behind and started like full, yeah. fully focusing on this and the idea of streaming which i i might do later who but, knows i don't know yeah the, I, the thing that i've noticed is that my my thoughts are not my own like they're they're not just my thoughts i think a lot of youtubers kind of feel the same way but a lot of people and, won't admit it Right, of course. People are too but scared to. I think I think people are very scared of not being successful. And again, it's, it's become very analytic based. And I understand that it's people's careers, it's their livelihood, depending on the person. But you know, I think I think the very near future you're gonna see a transition in YouTube of of slower style content that is not very in your face all the time. And eventually we're going to get to the point where we're going to return to very simple let's plays. I think, I think we'll start seeing that soon. I mean, everyone's um, just following Mr. Beast right now, right? Mr. Beast recently slowed down his video and, and he's like, oh, see, like you don't always have to do fast pace. And everyone's like, oh, slow videos are the new method. Not, not you, by the way, not you included in this. Like, you're saying a whole different thing, but people are like, oh, new, like slow videos are because Mr. Beast said it, the brand new meta. Let's slow our, like everything down now completely. You know, shut your yeah. mouth in thumbnails because that's the new meta because Mr. Beast said it, you know? Yeah, so, it's, you know, it, if if everyone follow what Mr. Beast does, YouTube's gonna lose its charm. There's gonna there's gonna have to be people that do something different. Like the podcast. <laughs> uh, what would you what would you call your what would you generalize your YouTube content as? Uh, I have six videos, um, and it's me just posting whatever I think is right. Um, my videos are not good by any stretch of imagination. They kind of suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I I my last couple of videos, my past two I post this week are just me playing hardcore. Like I, I just cut down a stream. That's literally it. And I cut down the parts I thought were. Funny, and I posted it. And that was it. And that's what it's about. That's yeah, what it should and, be about. My my most recent video did very very well for my size. Very happy. I guess one thing that's quite lucky about us, though, Kyle, is uh, that we both have in quotation marks IRL jobs, so we yes. can kind of, I guess, in a sense, we're making a different form of income, so we can in quotation marks sacrifice not doing high quality videos. And that's why I've said this about once again, sorry, about the podcast is like it's a passion project, right? I do it because it's fun. I mean, that yeah. shows.
shown by the views i get a hundred or a hundred ish views on the podcast on youtube at least anyways and it's like if if i cared so much about the views the podcast wouldn't still be around that's that's you know proven but like i do it for fun because i enjoy it but then i also work and as as much as i'd love to make the podcast a full-time thing i've openly said i want to make it a full-time thing that doesn't mean it's not a passion project you know right how and this is going to be for the viewers who are listening to this this is going to be a midweek mc down the line how do you find balance in working life and content creation life the truth is i think about content creation the moment i wake up and the moment i go to to the moment i go to sleep like i'm always thinking about content how you can um, improve how you can do better right well not yeah, even that but yeah. that and ideas for it you know things i want to do like oh i really want to make this or like what am i going to do today on stream you know things like that yeah. and you know it's it's about finding the balance like you said uh between my real life job to finance my time to spend on content so you know it, it's definitely not the it, or it's definitely about finding the balance of i'm going to separate my real life job and then once i'm done with my real life job i'm kind of left you know like I, i'm making content i'm thinking about content this is where i'm going to do most of my work for it and because i have to do my job at the end of the day like that's the most important part yeah but um, the balance behind it is just, you know, like you have a job to do, like you're getting paid to do this, obviously. So do it. Then I'm going to do my job the be- to the best of my ability. And then once I'm done um, for the day, then I'm going to be Kyle F and I'm going to be the streamer or the content creator that I am. Then after that, it's just because it's content creation is my, I don't know, like what I want to do with my free time. Like I, I supplement my free time for content creation, like playing video games. I'm able to monetize it in a very small way. It helps me pay a couple bills and um, something I like to do. So I'm, I'm going to do that. You know, I could I could definitely do something else like, you know, I don't know, watch football or, or watch soccer, or hockey or whatever. But I don't know. I just I just enjoy doing content creation and definitely not the traditional path. Like if, if you go to my real life, like, again, I'm 24 years old. There's a bunch of adults around me that think this is weird, stupid, cringe. But it's just what I like to do. So I don't care. And anyone, I, if I anyone else is anything you today. do like for work. Oh, yeah, I do okay. computer science stuff. Oh, cool. um, that's cool. Yeah, so you're so smart. I'm, I'm a computer <laughs> science. <laughs> I, I, I like to say I'm smart, yeah. But it's fun. I, I, I enjoy what I do. Um, smart, it's yeah. challenging, very difficult. I, I work my ass off to get where I am today. And I'm only looking to improve in my work life as well as my content life as well. And there's going to be a point in which my real life job is going to take a higher priority than you know, being able to do my pastime, where I'll have to commit more time to actually working and on my real job more. Bigger though, right? And I, I've had that internal conflict of like, am I am I really putting my priorities in the right places? So I've, I've had to find that balance past. So uh, making yeah. sure that I'm doing my job best of my ability as well as my top ample time to be me. See, I'm I'm quite fortunate because like I'm I'm only 20 years of age, and I say I'm only 20 years of age because I feel like that still gives me at least two years to try and make this something, you know? Right. And I'm I'm a barista. I do. Uh, yeah. I, I I make coffees. That's that's literally all I do. I don't drink coffee, but I make it. And yeah. I'd like to. Say I'm pretty good at it. But like at work, like because everybody in this kind of world at least if you're in the like making coffees or working in a supermarket kind of world that you have a side hustle right and that's that's why i do have a side hustle like a few of my co-workers have side hustles and it's like everyone at work knows i edit for a podcast they don't know that yep. I run the podcast and it's mine, but everyone knows that I edit edit for a podcast because that's what you right. talk about. I say I edit for my mate's podcast. I say he pays me for it. I don't know. I haven't earned a single penny from this podcast since it's been a thing, right? I've spent a right. lot of money on it, but I've never earned anything from it. But as far as right. my coworkers are aware, I edit for my mate's podcast and he pays me quite well. I'm fortunate in the sense of I'm able to take sacrifices, right? I've kind of established this connection with my partner and like with the whole thing. And like I've been able to figure out the time to record a podcast every Monday or in this case on a Saturday record a right. podcast every wednesday and like you know it it's it's just what works i'm I, and that's what i'm lucky for but and that's kind of like links with you is like it's just about balancing it's about finding the right time for things but then at one point it's going to get to you will have to choose and it's, it's it's if content like for instance with me how i see it right i i'm giving i'm giving myself two years i'm not giving myself two years completely i'm going to give myself yep. obviously more than two years but if in two years i just feel like not enough progress has been made i'll start considering like because i'll have to then prioritize one of the two because i'm i'm using my IRL job which I'm earning money for to invest in the podcast but if I'm not going to be able to like I said it's still a passion project but if it gets to a point where I'm spending a lot of money on the podcast but I can't afford that from the podcast kind of thing it's when it gets complicated you know yep exactly I I, I think I think what I've done is that I've realized that I can't monetize it in the way that I want to right now I don't make enough money to be able to hire editors and do this that and this and that I can't do everything myself so I've learned to do everything myself and I think I think it's it's given me yeah it, it gives 
you the unique skill set to, you know, be able to learn how to edit a video, learn how to understand like, uh, I don't know, like audio cues and sound design, things that I would have never done before if I hadn't done content creation. Like I, I think one of the biggest things for me that I've learned since being a content creator is ironically public speaking. Okay. So at the beginning of this year, I had to give a big, big um, presentation to some of the most important people in my company. I'm part of this this program where there's a couple of people giving a similar type of presentation about their work. But um, I got such great reviews from the presentation, like the way that I'm able to deliver what I'm talking about and, and things like that, that um, got the executives like very keen on my skill set. Um, it's given me a lot of great opportunity in my work life. Streaming, streaming has given me dividends in my real life, and it's given me a unique skill set that I wouldn't have if I didn't invest in myself in this way. Yeah, and I like, and not a lot of people do it and notice, and it's undiagnosed, but it's very much there. I have anxiety. I do. Like, it's it, mm -hmm. back in at least school, it used to be very, very bad to the point where I was like sick every morning in year seven, um, which was like when I was like 13. And like, I'd get like nervous every single day before college. Even when I started a job, I got like very, very bad. And it's like, it's undiagnosed, but it's there. So it's one of those kind of things. Right, I just never right. wanted it to be diagnosed. But with the podcast, for example, it's made me such a confident speaker. And that's why, like, one time, a day i would have never like I, my first job was warehouse because i was too scared to talk to people then right. then i started the podcast while i was at the warehouse and i guess like one like one time like it's also helped with for instance last year if i had uh, so i know i'm saying their name a lot it's just as an example feinberg right because you know i'm, I'm right. i'd like feinberg's content if they were yeah. if they came on the podcast like last year for example i would have been such a fanboy i would have been i would have been professional but i would have been like in a sense unprofessional i wouldn't have been able to keep my call i would have been like really hyped would have been really excited nervous before recording the podcast i had him on last week and it was just like talking to somebody i've talked to for ages like with you for example i joined the corner i was like you're right and then we just talked right and now on the right. podcast we're just talking but if i never did content creation i never started the podcast i would have never been able to do that i would have been so shy i would have been so nervous so i kind of links to yeah. you how you've become good at public speaking i have become very good in the sense of being able to just talk and that's why i'm good at i'm good at talking and that's and the anxiety is what always stops me from doing what i was good at and now the podcast has kind of brushed the anxiety to the side and let me do what i want to do you know yep exactly it's you know it's just stepping out of your comfort zone that's one of the biggest things i've learned with conservation and like you said like just talking like this with new people is just how you do it because like i mean i've always i've always wanted to do something regarding like commentary as well it's always been something i've interested right. in like watching mcc live yesterday i thought i've like i thought in my head obviously like, i'm not saying i wouldn't ever get the chance to but i looked at yes and i was like i would love to be sitting where like cory way and Kara was sitting doing that commentary right because that's what i like to talk dude that's why i run the podcast because that's what i'm good at and it's like one time a day if i i would have thought oh like i would have been too scared to do that but now i think about them like as much as there'd be nerves i reckon if they turn around and said yeah we're doing one in europe we'd like you to be like to commentate it i reckon and I'd be I'd be good enough to be able to do it. Whereas like two years ago, I would have been like, no, I can't do it. Sorry, like the nerves are getting a better on me. I, I, I can't sit right. there and do this. Like I won't be I won't be able to control myself. You know, like I would, not control yeah. myself like fanboy type. I mean, control myself is like with nerves. Right, hundred percent. It's just it's just about growing as a creator. And it's it's the people you meet as well. Like you said, there's some of your best mates like Echo, etc. You met through SMPs, and it's about surrounding yourself with the right people. And I, that's what you've done. And you're you're like you know you're you're a really good person yourself. You know you are like you're yeah, a really cool you. guy. I've, I've, that's why thank I wanted. You on the podcast because i knew you'd be someone really cool to talk to and you're proving that right now you know oh, thanks man i appreciate that <laughs> no worries a little, a little bit of a little bit of co more compliments for you there kyle <laughs> <laughs> i love compliments <laughs> I guess then, before we move on to Twitter questions, uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about speed running. I kind of like, sure. I, I just wanted to link the whole working thing into talking about Minecraft. So like, instead of yeah. doing Minecraft and working, I guess it's just how I... So with speed running, I actually didn't yeah. know you used to do like AA, for example, or like partial AA or like the hardcore speed runs, etc. Uh -huh. uh, but it's something you've been getting into quite a lot recently with uh, 1.16 yes. with MTSR ranks. Yes. Why? Why do you enjoy it so much? Why is it? Why is it something that you do like alongside everything else that you do? Yeah. Um. So originally, I I I found speed running back in 2021, and it's just something I just find super unique. And it wasn't like Minecraft speed running at first. I, I used to obsess over summoning salt videos. Videos. And I found him when he had about like a hundred thousand subscribers, and now today he's he's summoning salt, you know. But I used to obsess over those videos. I used to watch GDQ, and then eventually I found Minecraft speedrunning through Curryway. Um, and I found his 1436 world record. I was like, that is so, so sick. So I wanted to do something similar to that. And I didn't officially start running until late last year, early this year. Um, I would do like, like very simple, like, oh, I'm going to try to speed run today. And it would just be like 
complete doggy doo doo fart runs because I didn't know what <laughs> I was doing. Yeah. Um, but now that I actually understand the game and how to speed run it, it's something that I've grown a passion for. And I've known about the speed running community for a long time. And I just find the, that community to be one of the most fascinating, self driven communities that there is in the content, content creation space because they care so much about themselves. They care, they have so much pride that they're speed runners and they want to like show more people, get more people. Involved. And it's really impressive and, and really motivating to see like how passionate they are about their craft and their subsection of Minecraft. It's just so cool to me. And so I, I've kind of tried to invest myself into it because uh, to be honest with you, I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan of that. Um, like Feinberg is someone that I watch on a very consistent basis. Curryway is someone I watch on a consistent basis. F uh, Fulham, I watch on a consistent basis. Even going back to Crooks, when I first started my job, I used to watch Crooks streams every morning. Um, and then when he quit speedrunning, I, I would watch Cube. And when he went to the military, now it's, you know, EB. Or, or like small speed yeah. runners like that just like good at the game so like so i find it so fascinating and enjoyable to watch and now i'm i'm lucky enough where these guys are my friends and i, I i'm able to hang out with them play games with them on a consistent basis um i don't know it's, it's something I, I really enjoyed it's opened up a new new subset of what i i like to do in the game um improve my skills get better at the game beat it in a unique way i think it's fun it was, yeah speed running is i mentioned this um on uh, on like last week's uh midweek mc talking about minecraft live uh which hasn't come out for us so i'm talking about in regards to when this podcast is coming out and it's like with speed running it's something that i've done and i enjoy it like i after after a month i got a pb of 27 minutes uh like of right. my first ever month of speed running and like you know it's, it's cool and i enjoy it but it's just something i feel like i can't get too much into i just like i don't i don't know for some of those i just can't comprehend the mechanics but it's something i'm still fully invested in for example like i've got a lot of speed runners on the podcast uh, i mean i'm talking to you right now about speed running uh like you know speed running is something i talk about quite a bit on twitter I'm I'm I've become a pretty big advocate for like Minecraft esports, especially in once again the speedrunning scene. And it's like yep. because of like because of like like I'm kind of in a sense like you, for example. Like you're into it, but you're more into it running wise. I'm still I'm a very big fan of like these speedrunners. Like once I when I started the podcast, it, one of my like one of my original goals was to have speedrunners on the podcast. Like and this was back in Bedrock right. days, back when I did like when I when I started the podcast making Bedrock content. I wanted Java speedrunners on the podcast. So that kind of just says a lot, right. you know and like yeah it's just something i think is also really really cool but you have gotten you've gotten quite good at it over the recent over the recent months <laughs> Uh, have you have you been trained by anyone or are you are you self-taught or i am pretty much all self-taught i wouldn't say i'm good at speed running i'm, I'm lucky to have saying. friends i I, I would say i'm decent i'm not good like right now i'm practicing to get to that high echelon uh, of like sub 15 i think sub 15 is where i can say i'm a good speed right now i'm i think my pb is 18 18 um good, i can get bro. to sub in my eyes i think i just feel yeah <laughs> We're getting there. Um, but like I have friends that are speedrunners, obviously, that are, are really good at the game, obviously. Um, and I can ask them questions and they can give me the answer. I think to take my my skills to the next step, I need to like start doing like that coaching thing or, or get people to help me out with things because I just don't know how to do it. Like there's skills that I just don't understand and um, I'm still learning about. So I just need to learn to deliver it. But like I said, I'm not a speedrunner by any means. I'm not a good speedrunner. I'm, I'm just someone, I wouldn't even say I'm part of the speedrunning community. I'm just someone that genuinely enjoys speedrunning and, and watching people play the game in a certain way so you're just ken uh, you could say so <laughs> no yeah i uh, i had no clue how to use ninja brain bots i got a uh, bendo to teach me and now i actually know how to do it like i tried watching tutorials yeah. and everything but i'm very much a learner of somebody has to sit in a call and speak to me and explain it to i can't watch tutorials i just never have been able to really but, i mean with like yeah. basic ones yeah but yeah 100 percent. before we move into the twitter questions then is there anything that you you wanted to talk about in anything do you did that, that i might have missed or is there anything i do you think it would be a cool topic for the viewer to listen to that i missed or? no you've done a good job you've, you've hit pretty much everything man yeah see I, i'm good at this i've i've become i mean you know the 50 the 50 second episode yeah i, I hope i'm i hope i'm good at this by now yeah <laughs> so yeah. i have uh three twitter questions one of them actually being more of an interaction for you here kyle uh so obviously i asked the ones earlier of how you pronounce cow f that was from both yeah. uh both echo and um oh god i deleted the, the bloody thing yes I, I deleted the um the, the i when i asked the topic i deleted it off my word document and i deleted it so i'm sorry but yeah didn't then too uh so the next one comes from apo kuna uh i our apo i should say and it's yep. uh can i join the f smp uh that's it's a tough one man because it doesn't even exist why i think i think in, <laughs> why good question um <laughs> look this is this is a joke that i i I don't think I've or I've been saying it since like they started announcing people for Pirates SMP. I don't know. I just would comment on every single post. Can I join? And it just <laughs> became a bit. And then so I think like the night before I was supposed to get announced, I someone sent a message 
in the discord like why do you do this <laughs> um i was like i don't know i thought it was funny and then so i took it to a new, another level because people started like responding to me like i hope kyle joins um and obviously i knew i was joining the entire time but there's been situations where like my my real life job has interfered with like content creation and opportunities and stuff so i took it to another level like rats earlier and yeah, exactly. And I and so I tweeted about it. I said, look, I, I appreciate everyone that's like supporting me or whatever. Um, I, I, I it just sucks that like I can't get these opportunities because of having a job. You know, it sucks, but it's whatever. <laughs> like, well, we move essentially. Yeah. Uh, and people were like, stop, stop fucking with us. And <laughs> I was like, like, I, I wish I could I double down. I said, I wish like I was joking with you guys, but it's true. Like, I, I just don't get the opportunities because of my job. I just don't have the time. And I kid you not, like the night four in the Pirates Discord, I think Amesy sent a message saying you are such an asshole i said this is really funny and so we, we our original goal we had this master idea and i was going to go i was going out i was going out to the bars my friends and i was going to tweet a picture of me like with a beer in my hand like quote unquote drunk like oh and, and up oh, he's gonna drink pirates to pee oh and i was gonna <laughs> respond to it next morning like when i was supposed to get announced saying like dm me we need to talk about this like just something like that yeah and then i got announced and that was it uh that, i thought it's a funny little story and it, it, i thought it was really funny i think a lot of people like yeah, really enjoyed good. it a lot of people got a good kick out of it so and pe some people took it the wrong way too some people were like people actually people actually thought that i was like joking about this all um but it's true like it, it's a genuine uh thing that i felt where I, I i've missed opportunities there's there's times that i can't make things for pirates for example because like a lot of the cast is eu and i just can't make events or, or i can't stream with people because they stream it while i'm working um and so i kind of yeah. got to supplement that but it's okay you know like i'm still able to hang out with them on the weekends do things with them on the weekends and that's what people don't realize like even with me for example like sometimes i have to go to bed early because i have to i have a 7 a.m start the next morning like right and so it really just depends for example like i can set up i can set up doing the podcast to like i can set up editing the podcast up until like 1 a.m and then go sleep and wake up at 5 a.m it screws me over but sometimes i have to take that sacrifice but like i can't stay up till like at like 12 o'clock at night on a voice call because i still live with my parents and my walls are very very thin so they right. can hear everything so if i go on a voice call for example i always get like a message like oh I'll quiet down or something like which isn't their fault i mean it's completely respectful as to why it happens because if i'm being loud and my walls are thin they want to sleep they got work you know but like yep. so it's, it's, it's so people sometimes don't see the behind the scenes struggles of like i have it as well i don't talk about it too much but there's certain stuff in my life like with work and just like even living with my parents like my parents are great they're very very supportive of the podcast so don't take like the, i hope the viewers don't get the wrong idea with that i just mean more so the example i gave there of when they go to sleep i can't draw voice calls kind of thing it's like people don't realize behind the scenes that as much as you mean it you still can make jokes about it you know like sometimes i miss opportunities because right. of work but it doesn't mean i can't make a joke about it because that's just it's, it's also kind of not saying you use it as this but it can also sometimes just be used as a bit of a coping factor as well do you know like some sometimes people make jokes about stuff that's like people be like oh you should be sad about that but it's like no i, I want to make jokes about it because that's just how i how i am you know yeah 100 i don't think you're saying that properly but i think i think you get what i mean so yeah i mean you got invited to it anyway so that's that's still really, really yeah, cool. yeah exactly and now uh, you are starting to get more opportunities as they come there was something i was going to say in regards to but i just i just can't oh that's it with the whole like uh with the whole like um people not being able to take as a joke i mean i will <laughs> you know right yeah like it's funny too uh, you telling me the story i find it quite funny as well so yeah exactly it all works out uh, I, I still feel like that's something else i was going to mention i mean i i back to the, the original thing then so cow f uh, cow smp is is cow f smp is never going to be a thing if it ever uh, is a thing it's not going to be anything special man yeah it'll, it'll just, just be, a just bit be banter, me yeah. it'll just be me with my friends and it'll just be i'm gonna play with my friends now if you, if, if you want to call it something it is and sure <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the next one then comes from Nightmare, and it's what are some things you'd like to do slash move towards in your content? That's a really good question. You know, I'm always thinking about things that I can do to level up my content or be <clears throat> be a better <clears throat> content creator. And genuinely, it's just do more. I I don't make much, and this this is gonna sound like kind of like quitter mentality, but I I don't use a lot of my finances to support me in my content creation space because I can think I I think I can do everything, and I always think about the cost benefit analysis but i think it's coming to the point where if i want to just be able to do more i need to sink more money into it and i just haven't gotten to that point yet so it's something where i want to kind of do unique styles i have some things in the pipeline right now with some of my friends that i think are going to be unique but more like one of those things where you can pop on and just kind of like giggle at you know um i want to be i want to be known as a, as a creator that is just kind of known for like good vibes like having a good time um and hanging out and having fun and in the future that's what i, I strive to do but we'll see what that actually entails in the future i think i've gone down the road of i have been a marketed 
as a lore creator. Um, I don't think that's who I am. I think people that watch my streams know that's not who I am. Um, yeah. I'm definitely much more than that. Um, and I kind of want to shy away from that feeling, even though I really enjoy it. But I, I don't want to be just like, oh, that guy's on Pirates SSB or that guy's been on Outsiders, you know? I want to be known as Kyla. So that's my goal in the future, um, to just entertain more people, make people laugh. You know, I just want to be like, I don't know. It's going to sound stupid, but I want to I want to be like that stream that you can just kind of pop on, be almost rely, relied on. Um, comfort streamer. To have a good time. I don't want to say comfort streamer. Like, I, I don't think I'm a comfort streamer. I think I'm someone All that right. you can enjoy watching because I'm not there like, oh, you're you're looking so pretty today. I just saw Kanye West oh, in Minecraft. Oh, wait, uh, is, that what, is that what comfort streamer is? Oh, I've always had uh, such a different term for comfort streamer. I've always just had comfort streamer of like, of just someone who, like, my comfort streamers are just people I enjoy watching, not because they make me feel good about myself. Like, some sometimes, like, I watch a streamer and they'll be like jokingly rude to me. It's not, I've always yeah. just used comfort streamer as a term of just someone I enjoy watching. And if I'm feeling a bit down, I'll go and watch them, even if they're going to hurl abuse at me. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's an open ended definition. You know, like, that's, like, that's the time it, it I can be interpreted as many ways. Yeah. yeah. It's, when I said it. Like, if, if you call me your comfort streamer and be like, okay, sweet. But like, that, that means something to you. I don't know what it means to me. You know, that's like, right. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. If you enjoy watching my content, then fucking awesome. Um, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. You don't have to call me your comfort streamer. I don't, I don't want to be marketed as like comfy cozy like hey, hey my perception of it may be skewed because that's what people on tiktok used to do they used to market themselves in a certain way um yeah. to spread like oh good vibes like oh i'm good at bed wars you know stuff like that oh i, I mean yeah i guess just my my perspective has always just been i just want i enjoy watching that's why that's why when i use it as like a compass human that's the time i meant but yeah i get that's completely fair that makes yeah. sense and then the final one isn't a twitter question it was just gracie apologizing i don't know why this has been i think this has been a great podcast <laughs> but uh yeah great gracie <laughs> apologized but i mean you know what as i replied to them it's, it's a sacrifice i had to take and i think it was a worthy yeah sacrifice. exactly <laughs> exactly it was worth it worthwhile i mean i think you were pretty cool on the podcast so. <laughs> ah, thanks i appreciate it but yeah i think i think that's it kyle i think that sadly sadly brings the end of our talk now all right man uh before i do the outro here would you like to promote yourself your name where can we find you and like, every everywhere where you have a platform where can we find you yeah you guys can follow me on twitch uh, i stream i stream pretty much every weekday sometimes on the weekends um at kyle f uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at It's Kyle F. You subscribe to me on YouTube. Kyle F with three Fs at the end instead of two. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I had a good time. No, I'm glad you enjoyed. Uh, yeah. as, as a final send off, can we can we just can we just hear how to how to pronounce your Kyle F? Hey, Kyle F. <laughs> Kyle F. Perfect. Thank you. Well, this has been Inside MC. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe. Don't eat too much bread. Pieces. Goodbye.